fire away. So I know all of you. So, uh, Bill uh, Lewis, I saw him at Java One this year, and I've seen him at. I saw him speak at Java One this year, but I've seen him other times. He doesn't remember me, but I remember him. <laughs> He's a memorable guy. He will. He's a very, very good speaker, and I saw some of this presentation, and I just really liked it. And I've been playing with the, the tool that he wrote some, and I think we might have a spot for it here in the company. And I'm going to let Bill talk about himself because he's very good at it. So. Welcome, Bill Lewis. Thank you, Wayne. It is a great pleasure to be here. I would like to begin. Uh, uh, I am currently a professor at Tufts University, just moved over there, having a great time. Boston is a great place. It's nice to be somewhere with a baseball team that wins. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to begin on something that I haven't done before, which is a short little um, sketch, whatever it is, on equals. Everybody knows the equals method. You guys write in Java, so this is no big deal. And you probably don't know that. point is, equals ought to be an equality relationship. We've all taken mathematics and we know equality relationships which should be reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Perfectly fine. And we often want equality relationships in our programs. There are good reasons for it. That is all marvelous. Now, null confuses things. We don't like things to run exceptions, obviously, and we'd like at least these things to be consistent in what they do, and they're not. But that's not really that big a deal, unless you're in mathematics, in which case it drives you crazy. But for us programmers, no. No works fine, and that's pretty much what we want anyway. The thing is, when people define an equals method on glider, I'm a hang glider pilot, so I'm into these things. You think you're defining an equality relationship on gliders, because that's what you really want to do. You want to say, hey, is, is my formula you know, equal to his excess? And maybe it is, and maybe it isn't, and I can define you know, glide ratios, nose angles, and stuff like that. But the thing is, what you're actually doing is you're extending or changing the definition of equals which should be an equality relationship, on the entire set of objects in your uh, JVM, in, in your image. And that isn't really what you want to do first. And it, well, the thing that happens is that you define equals incorrectly for a glider, and boom, a container class suddenly breaks in J2EE. And obviously, this is a very uncool thing. If something breaks, you want something to break in glider, not somewhere else. Oh well. And then, of course, there's the fact that equality equals defines one relationship across the entire set of objects. Okay. But very often, we want more than one equality relationship. And the implication, just psychologically, is that this is the equality relationship. And a lot of programmers have a little bit of trouble going from equals to my version of equals and my other version of equals and my third version of equals. And they will jump through hoops. You've probably seen some code that does amazing things in equals. Now some pe I have seen people actually set global variables to say, ah, right now use this version of equals and then change the global variable so that they can use that version of equals. What you really want is you want an equality relationship defined on your objects. So I don't, my gliders should talk about equality between themselves, and they have, my gliders have no relationship to molecules. I won't even compare them. That's what I really want to do. <coughs> And of course, I might want several different equality relationships, which gets into the problems with things like the collection classes, which use the fact that equals is defined on object. 
So it's a cool thing, just this way they can use equals and they can compare all possible objects using it, but that's not generally what we want. What we really want is to say, I am going to make a set and I want to have my own equality relationship for that particular set. So I'll make a set of gliders and I say, this is the equality relationship that I want for the gliders in this set. And I might need to make a different set of gliders and want a different equality relationship for it. A perfectly reasonable thing to do. And Java doesn't give us a nice way to do it. This is what I say we want. Ain't gonna happen anytime soon. I have already tried convincing uh, 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 James uh, Gosling that this is what we should do, and I didn't succeed then, and I'm unlikely to succeed now. So we write wrapper classes. Uh, Sometimes I have rewritten the collection classes so that I can do precisely what I want and not get <clears throat> tied up in the details of messing with equals. There are a couple of uh, basic rules. If we want a reflexive relationship, boy, just check, is this equal to the objects you're coming in? A good thing. First, it's a really fast check. We like the really fast checks. And second, it guarantees that we're reflexive. The next thing we want to know is, is our object an instance of the um, class that we're defining our equals in? So, if we're working with molecules, great. If it is a molecule, we want to check out all these molecule details. If it's not a molecule, we really want to call the super method so that we can guarantee that we're going to have symmet symmetricity to guarantee that it's symmetric. The point is that if we return false here, then O, which is a um, a super, might be a superclass of molecule. If we call O dot equals of this, it might return true. And if we call this dot equals of O, it would return false. And that would be uncool. And then, of course, here's the details that we invariably want, which are very reasonable. I want to know, if I'm comparing two molecules, if they have the same number of oxygen atoms, are the configurations the same as they are? Return true, if either of them fail, return false, this is perfectly fine. But is it transitive? Let's take a look at this, which comes directly from the Java source code. Gee, that looks pretty reasonable. Colored point extends the uh, 2D point. Here's our equals method. If it is a colored point, then check the x and y coordinates and the color and if those are all equal, great, return true. If, if it's not a colored point, we'll call the super method. Okay, yeah. super method should take care of uh, the uh, reflexive um, aspect too. The problem that shows up is gee whiz. Point one is a 2D point. So when we call point one dot equals on colored point, we check details of equals for uh, 2D points, which presumably check X and Y. Fine. They're equal. Great. We check um, if point 1 is equals to colored points 2. Are the X and Y coordinates the same? Yes, they are. Cool. These two are equal. And then we check are the point, colored point 1 equal to colored point 2. Their X and Y, they're the same, but their colors are different and we've broken transitivity. <coughs> Man, what a pain. And this all relates to the fact that, gee whiz, we're not getting what we really want. Part of it is simply because we define equals as a method on object, as opposed to starting <coughs> points. And another part of the problem is simply because we really wanted this to be an equality relationship on colored points as opposed to an equality relationship on all points. And that gets really confusing really fast. 
I mean, I'm confused. Sometimes, oh, this is just a uh, from date, gee whiz, um, if we um, come in here, we check, are we super equal? If not, return false. That seems great. This will do a class check. They are correct. It will check that the object is indeed a date format, but here we're casting it to a simple date format, which it might not be, and it throws an exception, and we're not happy. So people make lots of mistakes in this one. Here's another example. Gee whiz, we want an equality relation to find on objects. Cool. This person said, gee, I think I want to have a new method called equals on text hit info objects, whatever they are, and whatever logic he wants. And of course, this guy in here will call that guy. But here's one of those points where, gee whiz, what am I doing? What happens? Do I really want this to be what I'm doing? The point is, text hit info objects are subclasses of object. And so your decision whether to, the compiler's decision, will I use this method or will I use this method, completely depends on the declared type of the argument, not the actual type. If the actual type is hit info, but it's declared to be a, 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 a of type um, a, a super class of this, We'll use go to this method. If it's specifically declared to be a hit info, we'll use this method, which of course is what this does right here. But it's confusing. And it doesn't help you. And of course, what I'm suggesting is that you shouldn't have this method. You should do that work up there. Um, and a brief comment on coding style. It does work, does what it does, um, if it's not an, in, if it is a text info object, then we'll cast it to one and call this method, and then return the fact that it's not equal to null and is equal to this and is equal to that. I spend a lot of time with student code and I tell them, don't do that. The number one thing I keep saying in class is, don't do that. <laughs> What if you wrote the code like this? If it's not a text info op, return false. If it is, then return this. If it's null, return false. If it's not here, return false. And simply the coding style here, I'm going to claim a vastly superior coding style because it's read legible. I can read this like that. The previous one I have to think about. I don't want to have to think about my code. And, I'm, ah, yes. Here we have another example. And what they're doing is what people do so much of the time, and that is they define something before they need it. Ooh, I probably am going to want an equals method for this. And they go through all the work to decide what the equals method is. The constructors for all of these guys are private. They're going to make a small number of canonical objects of alpha composite. And nobody else in the whole world can ever make one. The guy who wrote this class has complete control over which alpha composites exist. Therefore, he's making canonical objects. And with canonical objects, the equality relationship you want is eek, double equals. You don't need to test all of this because either you have exactly the same object, which is in two different places, and you're just comparing the two pointers. Yes, they're eek, cool. Or they're not eek, in which case you don't want to consider them equal and you're done. So this equals method never should have been written. They just should have stuck with double equals all the time. And their code would run 10 times faster. <laughs> 